What's up guys, welcome to another video. Today I am stoked because I want to share with you something crucial. It's like teeth. Teeth are so important because they're the first thing that you see when someone smiles. You have nice teeth, people like you. Well, resumes are the same. Resumes are a piece of paper or a PDF that you send to someone that wants to hire you for a job and this is the first impression that they will have on you. So you might put some effort in making your resume look good and I'm the guy to help you. Maybe you have questions like, is my resume too large? Is my resume too short? Do I need to put a picture in there? How much details do I write about my previous experiences? What if I don't have experience? So all of these questions I'm gonna try to answer in this video. I wanna help you guys make the perfect resume. I've been using my model for more than three years now and it works as a charm. I get tons of compliments and I will share with you guys that resume for free of course because this is YouTube, it's not like I'm making money here, I'm doing this for love. So let's not waste any more time and let's get right into it. Alright guys, let's take a look at that resume right now. I have here a PDF version that I generated using a Google Docs document and of course I will be sharing with you the link so you guys can change this template to suit your needs. Now let's take a look at this resume. I'm gonna put 100% here so we can see it all. So basically that's it. It's a one page document and as you can see there is a title here, there's a photo, some contact details, a little bit of a text, some skills. We're gonna go through all of that in details and I'm gonna help you understanding what kind of text you need to put here exactly, how to generate all of this data, right? I will also tell you what to do with this resume if you're trying to find your first job or if you're already a senior developer or if you're a junior developer because this resume will look different based on these uh, aspects. You can also implement different versions of this resume. You can have it in uh, your original language. For example, I don't know, I'm from Brazil, so I had the resume in Portuguese and then I had the resume as well in English. And I would send the different versions to different companies. So you can also do that. Once you edit the resume in the template in Google Docs, it's very easy to generate PDFs out of it. The link to the Google Docs document is gonna be in the description and I'm gonna explain you guys how you can copy this resume for yourself and do all of the edits, all right? So let's get right into it and let's look at this resume in details. So the first thing I wanna talk to you about this resume is the branding. And what I mean by that is uh, I'm talking about the colors that you're gonna use here. So if you pay attention, there is a little bit of this green tone that I used here. And this is my favorite color. I even <laughs> used it in my logo for Learn With Phil. So you should also try to do that. This is part of the branding and the way you want to represent yourself. So choose a nice color that you like and you're gonna be using that color on these little details like the job description, uh, the place where you were educated and also your title as a professional. So obviously you're gonna put your name here in the beginning and after that you will put the title that you wanna identify yourself with. So for example, imagine you're applying for a position for a Java backend developer. You can put here something like senior Java backend engineer or junior Java backend engineer, it's basically gonna be the title of the position that you wanna be working in. Now let's talk about this picture for a second. This is very important because the picture is gonna give the recruiter an impression of you. First thing is that you don't wanna be using an image with colors because if you use an image with colors, you will draw too much attention to your physical self. And this is not the thing that you're trying to sell here. You're not a model. <laughs> also, as you can see here, there is no background around me and that makes a more professional look for this picture. I will explain you how to do that. 
Actually, I think I'm gonna change this picture because my hair is a little bit longer now and I'm not wearing glasses. So let's do that. I'm gonna show you the whole process on how to take that picture. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna take a picture here. Um, I'm gonna basically take my phone, I'm gonna put it on a tripod and I'm gonna take a picture in front of a wall, usually Preferably it's a white wall or anything like that. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna use a free software after that to edit this picture. Let's do it. Okay guys, now I have my image here on my desktop and I'm gonna edit that image to remove the background so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna open express.adobe.com we're gonna go here in the plus sign and remove background select the image that we want to edit let adobe work for a while and voila the background is gone now we need to customize the image to create this beautiful white background image that we wanted initially. So in order to achieve that, first we need to replace the background to the white color, just like that. Next, what we want to do is that we want to add a, the circled shape here. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna crop and shape and select this round form here and perfect well not quite let's see make it now with that image here there is a little bit of a noise so I'm gonna edit this cutout Pay attention that this feature is only available in the pro version. So if you have a little defect like that, please take another picture. This happened with me because I was not on a white wall. So now my picture is looking great and I want to add the circle. So I'm going to go to shapes and I'm going to search for a circle here. Let's see this one. It has a border and a fill, so I don't want any fill here. Let's see if I can get rid of the fill. Um, well, maybe like that. I'm gonna put that as a second layer behind my picture. And I'm just gonna increase the size of this circle until it fits perfectly on my picture. So something like... Okay, next step is actually to make my picture black and white. So you're gonna go into enhancements here and you will drop the, one of these elements here, which I don't remember. Of course, the saturation. So you will drop your saturation to minus 100 and your picture will become in the tones of gray and white. And now you're all to download the PNG with a transparent background for your resume. Now I'm gonna open the resume and I will change that picture finally. Let's insert a new image from my computer. I will select my face and voila. All right, now let's go to this little summary here. This summary is really important because this is where you're gonna present yourself to the recruiter and in a few words only. Usually what I advise here is to tell a compelling story with a lot of passion and emotion. So in my case here, if you can read through the text, I explained that I'm a Java ninja and I'm creating this beautiful software, highly performant, efficient software I've been working already 10 plus years in this area in all kinds of different fields and this gave me a lot of knowledge to write clean and elegant code. So you see that here I'm talking about 
myself but with a lot of passion for software development and I really want to show that to the recruiter. Alright, with that said, let's talk a little bit about the skills you're gonna add here. So I divided this in two columns, professional skills, which are skills that you use to perform your job, and also social skills, which are very important because you're gonna be working in a team and with people, with managers. So you also wanna expose here that you're a good person and easy to work with. So let's start with the professional skills I added here. As you can see, all of the skills that I added, they go into a order of relevance. So obviously I'm a Java developer, I put Java first here. You can add any other languages, Java and JavaScript, if you are fluent in those, this would work great. Next, I add the frameworks I use for development. Mostly I use Spring and Spring Boot, that's why I added it here. In third place, for me, it's very important to write tests and do work using test-driven development. That's why I added here JUnit 5, Mokito, and AsserJ, which are the tools that I use the most to do testing. And next of that, you can add other things like continuous integration, Docker, test containers, cloud computing, and the other tools that you use in your day-to-day -day life. Next to that, let's take a look at social. So all of these things that I, that I added here, they really represent the kind of person I am and things I did and I can talk about each one of these points. So I want you to do the same, but with the kind of person that you are. Maybe you're an introvert. You know, all of us, we have great things in us. We have great skills and we have to be proud of these things and be honest. And one more thing. Try not to add skills that you don't dominate. So, for example, if you are learning a new framework like reactive programming, don't put it here. Because if the guy that is doing the interview with you knows a lot about that, he's going to destroy you in the interview. So you need to be confident of the things that you add here. In this second text here, I like to call it the second summary. This is the part that you're going to talk about your hobbies, for example, things that you like doing. In my case, I added here that I have a preference from working from home and also that I like to study new technologies like the service mesh architecture and I'm mastering the reactor project to be able to write software in a reactive way. And also I added here that I keep myself updated by reading books, blogs and uh, other people's code right then you can add here also a link to your linkedin profile because sometimes it's interesting to open up linkedin and get more details about all of this data education is very important for everybody to know if you have studied if you have courses if you have diplomas some employers especially in the java world they care a lot about that there's also people that don't really care as long as you know how to code and you can prove that you are a good programmer, you will get hired. So in my case here, I only added the university where I studied. I didn't add any more certifications or diplomas, even though I have them, I don't think it's that relevant. If you're a junior developer or if you're just starting, I would recommend you to add everything that you have here because you're gonna make the education column a little bit bigger and you're gonna probably have a smaller column for clients and work that you did previously. So try to balance this out. If you're a senior, try to put as much as you can of work that you did, but if you're a junior, maybe add more things in the education column and less in the clients column because you haven't worked that much for other clients. Now let's talk a little bit about the clients here. As you can see, all of these clients, they have a little image here. They have a period of time that you worked with them. They have the location. They have the title of the job and they have a little descript description. So the short description here, it needs to be really short and it's in a very small font. So I want you to write here of things that you did in the company. Try not to mention we but try to use I because it's important for the recruiter to see what you did in the company and how you brought value for them. 
Also down here, you can see that I highlighted the technologies that I used on those projects. This is nice because when the recruiter looks at that, he can uh, maybe ask some questions or uh, make some things clear regarding the technologies that you worked on that specific project. Now, as you can see, there are a few logos here, right? And these images, they were obviously downloaded from the internet, but you cannot just download this image in any format. I will explain why. These images, they need to have a transparent background, so they look nicely on the screen, just like here. You can see that if I zoom in, the quality is quite good, and sometimes uh, the, the logo doesn't have a white background, so what to do about that? So let's say I work for Apple and I want to get their logo. So I will type Apple logo PNG. PNG is the file format that will actually have this transparent background. So here you can see that this is a PNG logo and you will just press the right button and you're going to download this image, save image as Apple logo on the desktop. Boom. So let's replace the image here, for example, of this logo. I will delete it and I will insert a new image from my computer. I will find the Apple logo that I just selected. And as you can see, she fits perfectly here. The only thing you need to do is to adjust the size of the logo, just like that. And voila, looking good. Okay. Last but not least, we want to export this resume as a PDF file to be able to send this to recruiters. So how to do that? You go to File, Download, PDF Document, press here. Google Docs will generate a PDF file and you can save it anywhere on your computer. Okay, now let's see how you can edit this template yourself. First, you gotta go to the description below and get the link over there. On that moment, you're gonna be able to see the resume, but you're not gonna be able to edit the resume. So what I need you to do is to come into file and make a copy. Once you make a copy of this document, you're gonna be able to edit it and change everything you like. Okay guys, some final thoughts on this whole resume topic. Basically, your resume is your ticket into your dream job. And by following the tips that I shared with you in this video, you're gonna stand out from the crowd and you're gonna have a great chance of landing in that job. It all depends on you. Remember to make it personal, highlight your strengths and tell a compelling story, a beautiful story about you and your passion for software engineering. If you like this video, please smash the like button, subscribe to this channel because I really want to help you guys and I want you guys to help me grow in this channel. I suggest you watching this video right here or maybe right here. Basically it's a video about what skills you need to have to become a successful junior developer. So don't forget to watch this video next as it will increase your chances in landing that first job. Thanks for watching. Love you all and good luck nailing that interview. Oh wait, you don't need luck? You got me? Ciao, see you in the next one.